Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at Slider Revolution 5 and how we can create Instagram-based sliders. Now, I recently covered this before Instagram updated everything and the tutorial became completely useless. So this is to address that video, which is pretty popular, and we're going to take a look at how we can do it now with the updated method of working with Instagram. So let's check out how we can do all that and a few other cool features. So stick around to the end of the video because there's a couple of little bits and pieces in here that you may not know how to do. So to kick things off, let's go through and set up the slider. So let's just click to add a new slider. And from there, we're going to come through and we're going to choose Instagram stream. We'll fill those details in in a moment. Let's just give this a name and set up some of the parameters. So we want to leave it as a standard slider. That's fine. We're going to come over to the navigation block and we're going to specify that we want arrows enabled so we can navigate through the images and not let it sort of slowly transition on its own. And that should be pretty much it. Obviously, you can customize the layout, whether you want to use auto, full width, the amount of space you want to use. I'm going to leave all that a default for now because I'm not too bothered on how the, the slider looks, more just how to build it. So next up, we've now only got four options to work with. We've got the slide, the maximum number of 20, the cache, how long it waits to refresh the information before it finds new images, the source, and the Instagram username. Now, the only caveat with this is that the source has to be public photographs. So in other words, you can't have a private Instagram account and be able to post the photographs. It has to be public so people can see the photographs in your Instagram stream. So let's just say we want to put a maximum of six slides in. And the name that I'm going to use in this instance is one of my other channels, which is Reaper TV. And like I say, we leave it to public photos. So everything is set up the way I want. I'll just hit save and we can then jump in and start creating the slider. So as you can see, we go into the normal way of working with our slider and we've got a normal blank slide. We've now got some options on the source. And as you can see, these are going to be different based upon the fact we're using Instagram. So there's a couple of options at the beginning, the stream image, video, video and image. And depending upon which one we choose, some additional options will open up. So you can see if we use stream image, we click to do stream video or stream video and image, and we can choose to use a cover because video is involved. So let's just leave this for now to say that we only want to stream the images. If we jump over to the source settings, you can see we've got the options we normally have. We can specify how we want to position the information on the slide or how we want the slide to be positioned. So we want to use it center center. We want to cover contain and so on. So we leave all those as they are at default. Now, if we scroll down, you see all that happens is we get a placeholder that says Instagram. And if we save that and preview it, so let's just click preview, you'll see that opens it up, but nothing actually shows up. Don't worry, it's all working, it's just the preview doesn't work to show us what's going to be displayed. So let's just leave that as it is. So let's say we've got the basics of our slider all set up, so let's just open that up in a page and take a look at what it looks like. So I put this demo page together and you can see there's the first image in my Instagram stream. And if I click the advanced arrow, you'll see that'll take us through to the next image, the third image, and carry on through. And if we jump over and take a look at the Instagram account, you can see that those are indeed the images that we have in order. So you can see all the information is there, it's pulling it in nicely, so everything is working the way we expect it to. So it's quite simple and straightforward. But all we have at the moment is just the slides. We've just got images. Doesn't tell anybody anything about it. So let's just jump back into Slider Revolution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and we're going to create some dynamic content to place over this. Now, all I need to do is we come down and say add layer. We're going to come in and we're going to say we're going to add text, HTML. Opens up the normal dialog box, allows us to put our text in there. So we're going to take that out from there, just delete that. And you can see because we've got the ability to use dynamic content and our source is dynamic, we now have the filter icon. So we can click on that and you'll see that'll open up a box that allows us to insert meta information that's specific, in this instance, to Instagram. So you can see we've got Instagram and we've got images. And if we take a look, the first column shows us the meta short code and the right column tells us exactly what that will do. So let's take a look at creating something a bit more interesting. Let's just say we wanted to put the information that's posted with the picture and the name of the author. So that's easily done. All we need to do is first of all, click on content. Now we can limit this. We can say content words 10 or content characters 10, and we can limit the amount of information that's pulled in. So this will obviously, if you're dealing with a smaller slider, you don't want to have tons of information on there. But we're just going to go for content for now. 
So you click on that, and you see that now puts the short code in there, and we now have our placeholder that has the short code information placed in it. So let's just drag that roughly where I want it. And let's do the same again. So we're going to add another text HTML. And this time we're going to delete that from there. Click on the filter icon, and we're going to come down and we're going to choose the author name. So that's it. We've got those two. So let's just bring that down. We can now go through and style that information. And even though we've only placed this onto this particular slide, because it's dynamic information, we only actually have one slide. So we don't need to use the static and global layers because this is dynamically pulling the content in. So it doesn't matter if we have 6, 10, or 20, or 30. All those images will be pulled in one at a time, and then we can easily populate this dynamically from our stream in Instagram. So now if we want to, we can easily come to this, and we can start to choose to style it. So let's just change the font. And we'll go for railway and we're going to set that to the author name so we'll leave that quite large we'll align it to the center then we're going to click on the next block and we're going to go in and choose railway on there as well so we've got consistency we'll set that to a slightly smaller font and we'll set that to 14. line space in we'll set that to 18. and this isn't particularly important but what we're going to do is we're going to jump over now we'll style that we we'll put a background in there so we say we want to put a black background in on near enough black set it to be semi-transparent so we put that to 0 0.8 so we've got transparency if we come over to spaces we can then put some space into our box so let's just say we want to put 20 pixels of padding inside that black box we're going to choose this to be center aligned and we'll make sure that's aligned to the center of the slider the other thing i want to do is just make sure that's selected and we're going to come up to the main title bar and we're going to check to make sure that we've got the auto line break set on. So that will make sure that the longer content will automatically wrap to the next line based upon the size of this box. So we can now just drag that out and make it larger. Scroll down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So we can stretch that out. So we can line everything the way we want it to be. Everything is set up nicely. So there we go. That's the basics of that done. And finally, let's just add some animation to that just to make it a bit more interesting. So we'll select it, go to the animation tab, and we'll just set this to be, we'll go for short from bottom. So that'll animate up from the bottom, and we'll do the same on the title. So we'll say short from bottom. And there you go. And let's just offset the timing on that so it just makes it a little bit more interesting. There we go. So let's just hit save on there. And if we jump over now, we should start to see that we've got not only the pictures being populated, but also the author name and the content coming in. So let's take a look. So jump over to the site. And you see, if we refresh that, we now have the author and we've got the information being pulled up, all animated. So we've got the next slide, it'll do the same again. So you can see we can quickly and easily populate this information straight from Instagram. And there's one final thing I want to show you. So we jump back into Slider Revolution and we scroll back up. We've got an option that says filters. So if we click on there, you can see we can now apply filters dynamically to the images it's created. So we might want to give it a black and white overlay. So let's just say we want to choose moon, for example, and refresh and save that. Now just come back to the site, refresh the page, and now everything will be in black and white. So pretty cool. So you can automatically style the slider, dynamically generate the content, apply filters to it, all very quickly and easily all done inside Slider Revolution and pulling information in from Instagram. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.